We love to take our celebrities and put them on a higher pedestal, don't we? People see a celebrity of some sort and they want an autograph or they want to touch them or a selfie. And we raise them up and we give them nicknames. And the newest nickname is Goat, greatest of all time. Tom Brady, the football player, um, Sierra, Sierra, I always forget her name. Vanessa Williams' sister. <laughs> so, and um, even, even Ken Jennings, the, the uh, host of Jeopardy, is called the greatest of all time. And some of these nicknames I like. I like the, um, the nicknames that they gave to, Ken, uh, to Wayne Gretzky, the hockey player. It's called the great one. And one of my favorite ones is, is Jackie Gleason, the great one if you remember Jackie Gleason. Most of the time we just call them kings or queens. And today we just want to wake you up a little bit and see if you know some of these. The queen of soul. Aretha Franklin, very good. But this one's a little tougher, the king of soul. That would be Otis Redding. I thought it was James Brown. I guess he's the godfather of soul. <laughs> And there's, of course, the king of country. That's a difficult one, George Strait. And then we have the king of pop. Come on, Michael Jackson. And, of course, the king of rock and roll. I'll give you a little hint. Thank you. Thank you very much. <laughs> a couple more. The king of swing. That's for big band music. This is a little tougher one. Benny Goodman. And today we celebrate the king of the universe. We don't have to put him on a pedestal. He's already there. But why do we celebrate this day, this solemnity of Christ the king? Well, let's go back to the history. 1925, almost 100 years ago, Pope Pius XI recognized in society things weren't going very well. Atheism was on the rise. Nationalism was on the rise. Secularism was on the rise, and things were happening in countries like Mexico and Russia that were not pleasant. And of course, it spread even further than that into Germany and everywhere else. So he wanted us to know that Jesus is our king. He reigns over everything. You heard that in the second reading. He reigns over everything. And because of that, the good Pope wanted us to take a look inside of ourselves and see where we need to recognize the king. And he wanted us to look into ourselves, and this is a good thing to reflect over the week, how he reigns in our minds and that we accept the truth and that he reigns in our wills, that we obey the laws of God, our will and he reigns in our hearts to love God above all things, above all things. And he reigns in our bodies as instruments of justice. So we need to ask yourself, do you accept the reign of God in your mind, in your will, in your heart, in your body? Because he is our king. You know, the other thing the good Pope wanted us to do was to take our faith to the streets. And that was important in 1925. But in 2022, it's just as important. Atheism on the rise, nationalism on the rise, secularism is on the rise. Secularism is they want us to, there's a pressure on us to not take our faith and put it into government and into our lives of, of uh, politics and everything else. And it's on the rise, and it's, it's getting pretty serious again. So what can we do? Well, we have to take our, our faith, and not just keep it privately, but take it publicly. When, when I was in formation, that's what they call diaconate training. They don't call it training, they call it formation. There was this little nun that came to talk to us, a little short elderly nun. And she, she was there to talk to us about taking our faith to the streets. And she told this story about how 
She went to Burger King, got her meal, sat down, made the sign of the cross, said the blessing, like she always did. And when she got up to leave, just ready before she got up to leave, she looked up and there was this tall man from Sedan standing there. And he looks at her and he says, I saw what you did. And then he says, you are my sister and I am your brother. And she was moved to tears. Because this little act of prayer to say thanks, someone saw it. And someone recognized it. And we can do that. I've, I've been to restaurants before and all of a sudden I see somebody go, <laughs> like a little chipmunk. Why? What are you afraid of? Afraid of being judged? Are you afraid of this secular world saying something to you? Are you feared, uh, a fear of being jeered at? Like the Romans did to Jesus on the cross in this gospel? So there's one way to take it to the streets. Just do the simplest thing and say your grace publicly and with, with this heart and soul that you would to thank God for your meal. If somebody sees it, maybe it'll touch them as well. We can also take our, our faith coming up Thanksgiving. This one's sometimes difficult for me because my family is all over the place in their faith. But I like to make sure I let them know that I have joy in my faith and joy in thanksgiving and joy in the prayer and our conversations, the charity and love. Try not to judge, but we can take our faith to our families. And this one, you'll know, I'm pretty sure you'll know this happens. Because Advent starts next week. It's a good time to practice our faith when we say Merry Christmas and not Happy Holiday. Now, other people can say that's fine, but don't let society and secularism rob you of Christ in Christmas. Why would you want that to be taken away from you? Sometimes when somebody says that to me, I say, well, you have a happy holy day. Because it is a holy day. Don't let them take it away from you. Live your faith. Take it public. And then we can do it by our example of our lives. You've heard that over and over again. But I'm going to tell you another little short story. I was working a golf tournament. Bob Gibson has a, used to have a golf tournament for the American Lung Association. And people had to stand behind the ropes. But I got to stand out on the golf course and chase errant golf balls and give them back to the celebrities. So I did. I went and got a golf ball and I handed it to one of the greatest baseball pitchers of all time, Sandy Koufax. And I said to Mr. Koufax, if you hit that ball right over here about 10 feet to the right, it'll trickle down to the hole. And how do you know that? I, I play golf. I know this shot. And he hit it perfect, and it almost went in the hole. He turned and gave me a big hug. And I was giddy about it. I got a hug from a famous person. I, you know, how often does that happen in your life? Still a little giddy about it. Got his autograph, just like I said earlier. But that's not what I admire about Sandy Koufax. Not his golf skills. Not even his baseball skills. Not even his Hall of Fame career. All that. It's just stuff. But on October 6, 1965, he was to pitch the opening game of the World Series. And he said no. He was Jewish. And that fell on Yom Kippur, the Jewish Day of Atonement, the holiest day in the Jewish faith. No, I won't. And that made all the papers and all the news and people say, how could he do that? Well, he knew the reign of God in his heart, in his mind, in his soul, in his body, and his will. And he wasn't afraid to express it. And that, my friends, is where we need to be. Not afraid to express the reign of God in our hearts. Now, we haven't thought about this for a while. We think about it once a year. And sometimes we just let it go. But it's never too, too late to start. 
And we get that example right in the gospel when he says, Jesus, forgive us. Forgive me for what I've done. And I'll see you in paradise, Jesus says. That's where we need to be, not afraid and never forgetting. And even if we have forgotten, it's never too late. It's just never too late to understand that your God and my God and our Christ and your Christ lives and reigns in our hearts, in our minds, in our souls, our bodies, and our will.